The views expressed in this podcast are not to be taken as either trading nor financial advice. Neither the announcer nor the Sears report make any claim to be certified financial advisors, and all reporting is dedicated solely towards being both informative and educational. Welcome everyone to the Sears Report Market Wrap-Up for September 19th, 2024. This Thursday, we're going to take a look at how the markets fared one day after the Fed rate cut of 50 basis points and to see if it really had any effect on the general economy or on Wall Street in particular. So with this in mind, let's go ahead and jump right in and see how the day fared. Well, the Dow did its recognition that the Fed was going to do more rate cuts and this is just the introduction. After a volatile yesterday in the equity markets, the Dow was up 522 points, with most of that coming right at the open and being a relatively flat rest of the day. The Dow closed at 42,025, and the S&P 500 was up 95 points to 5713, and NASDAQ, for the first time ever, was up 440 points to 18,013. Meanwhile, in the bond markets, let me go ahead and pull this up because we have swapped over to the new trading day, it appears. So I've got to find where these are. Uh, September bond markets, okay. Uh, the bond markets again, once again, had yields climb at the back end of the curve. The five year through the 30 year were all in the positive with the 10-year gaining 0.032% to close out at 37.19. Meanwhile, the front of the curve sold off and yields went down with the one month just a few days ago being over 5%, now at 4.653%. The dollar, meanwhile, was uh, down four, or up 4 cents to 100.63 on the DXY against a basket of currencies. And gold, gold had a good day and a recovery day. At one point, it was up over, let's see, that's uh, 70 cents different. It was up over $1.42, uh, but in the last hour of trading, there was some sell-off, profit-taking, so it ended the day up 71 cents at 30.85, with a high of 31.38. And gold got as high as 25.96, but still was up 2690, closing out the day at 2586. In the cryptocurrencies, there was a bid for both Ethereum and Bitcoin. Bitcoin was up nearly 2%, closing out the day at 62,964 with a 24-hour high of 63,872. Meanwhile, Ethereum was up 3.85%, closing out the trading day at 2464. In the oil markets, there was also a bid. WTI was up $1.04, closing out the trading session at $71.95, while Brent crude was up $1.28, closing out just short of $75 a barrel at $74.93. Some of the economic data for the day. Well, the House had its initial vote to try to stop the potential government shutdown and it failed miserably. The GOP measure, which was to extend, extend the government funding deadline by six months, was rejected by the House in a 202 to 220 vote, including 14 Republicans who voted against it. So, looks like Mike Johnson, Speaker of the House, is going to have a difficult time trying to sell this one, especially when so much angst is going on about the potential integrity of the election. And the Republicans are, there's at least a cadre of Republicans who are willing to see the government shut down uh, prior to the election and force Congress to do something about whether illegals or, or can or cannot vote in the federal election. Well, some economic data on the housing front, U.S. existing home sales tumble back to near 14-year lows in August which is interesting because housing starts and building permits shot way up. And this is one of the more interesting uh, dichotomies when it comes to the housing uh, data. 
it's not all in lockstep and you end up finding that new homes and permits may catch a bid uh, in a given month but the very next month they go down because those bids fall through people can't get the mortgages people can't get the loans or they decide that they don't want to buy the house Taking a look at the jobless claims, this is one of the more interesting ones because the jobless claims as opposed to the unemployment rate is showing that the Fed made a mistake in cutting rates. The day after the Fed slashed rates by a crisis like 50 basis points, jobless claims data plunges to multi-month lows, signaling an economy that is anything but soft landing, let alone landing at all. Adjusted initial claims tumbled from 231,000 to 219,000, the lowest since May, while unadjusted claims continue to tumble to 12-month lows. So the unemployment claims are saying that there really isn't a problem with jobs and unemployment, but we know from the BLS numbers that there are problems with jobs and unemployment. The real question is which are being counted and which are being politicized. Well, Rabobank had an interesting little uh, talk or th analysis and thoughts regarding yesterday's uh, FOMC 50 basis point cut. One of the um, analysts, Philip Mari, uh, clearly wasn't happy with what the Fed did, and he made this interesting, uh, interesting word choice. If there was a strong case for 50 basis point cut, Powell did not make it at his press conference. He repeatedly stressed that the US economy was strong, but we should see the strong move as a commitment to keep the economy strong, i.e. standard Fed speak. Do something and then in jawbone the exact opposite so the markets really don't know what's truly going on and much less the average person on the street. And he used this sort of metaphor for what Powell did. Doctor, we'll give you a an extra strong medication. The patient, is my condition that bad? The doctor, no, you're healthy, but we're committed to keep you healthy. <laughs> so this is what we're doing is everything's fine, but we got to give you a bunch of money and cut rates so that you can borrow more so you can stay healthy. That's the epitome of what the Fed did yesterday. But we got to look at some economic data that's showing the general economy is not doing so well. We start earnings season, or getting close to it, and FedEx crashes after missing across the board in their earnings guidance. Cutting guidance on weaker demand trends. So even online sales, shipping, and purchasing for retail as well as uh, big store uh, manufacturing is not coming through in the end. Well, we're going to close out the session today on a couple of little anecdotes. Uh, Paul and I did a podcast today re talking about the consequences of what has happened in Lebanon regarding the electronic devices and technology that uh, were uh, exploding in people's hands. Let's leave it at that. And what the ramifications are for those who are invo involved or potentially involved in it. Delta halts flights between New York and Tel Aviv through the year's ends. Delta Airlines is the latest international carrier to extend its cancellation of flights to Israel amid the growing war of Israel's north with Hezbollah. Delta announced Thursday it's pausing all flights between JFK and Tel Aviv through December 31st, citing as escalating security concerns. Now, this is where we get into some of the crux. Lebanon bans pagers and walkie-talkies on all flights leaving Beirut. Airport security at Beirut, Rafik Hariri International Airport will search for and prevent any pagers or two-way radios from being in cargo, checked, and carry-on luggage. The rule has taken effect immediately. So the question is, is this going to be something that airlines and airlines airport security is going to really kick into gear now that we have an incident where devices of older technology and is it anything that's got a lithium battery that can overheat potentially 
Well, those could cause obviously undue strain for the airlines if you have an explosion mid-air. But what it also does is it's going to be a hindrance for individuals taking smartphones, laptops, or anything on, on board because of the potential that cyber criminals or hackers could overclock the CPUs, cause a fire, and well, you can see where this goes. Finally, last thing we're gonna take a look at, the uh, CFTC, as well as the courts, are spending their time heading into the election deciding whether a prediction market has legal standing to make bets over which candidate is going to win the election. A legal battle over the future of websites election prediction market is set to continue on September 19th today when an appeals court hears the case of Kalshi versus CFTC, a decision that could reshape how Americans engage in political discourse. So it's not only about voting, it's about making bets on the subject. Anyway, I want to thank everybody as always for stopping by on this Thursday, September 19th, 2024, for your market wrap up here with the Sirius Report. Uh, to everyone, I want to thank you for being a part of this great community. Don't forget to subscribe, share, comment, uh, pass along if you think it's of importance or informational to anyone. And until the next time we get together, have a great day.